So, okay, where were we? Given a string, we want to check if it can become a palindrome through a case change of some, possibly none, letters. Okay, so basically, um, you know, yeah, okay, okay. Um, I, I've got a couple ways we could do this one. So yeah, I think we're gonna basically use what we learned in the previous challenge to, uh, to try to choose a most efficient algorithm for this one. So the one I wanna start with is one that we've been doing for a little while. You know, the classic way of checking a palindrome in JavaScript anyway, or at least a really popular strategy is to do something like this, to take the string, to put it into an array so that we can reverse it and then just join it back into a string and see if that's equal to the original string. Now this should return true for any examples that are a palindrome without a case change. But the question is, well, what if we, what if we did, um, you know, what about for the ones that we would need to change some of the, some of the letters? Yeah, because it, 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 there's no restriction on it, right? It could be that we need to change like one of them or it could be 15 of them we need to change given, uh, I, okay, it could be 10 of them we need to change. Actually, no, if they're all capitals, then that wouldn't make a difference. It could be nine of them that we need. Oh my God, no, it could be four. Yeah, I think that's my final answer. Maybe five, maybe, it could, anyway. It's not worth it to dwell on that. The point is, if we want this to work, if we want to adapt this so that it's gonna work in this case, we could do something like input string is assign the value of input string dot to lowercase, kind of like what we were using in, uh, in one of the previous ones. And there we go. So we could do something like that. It would work. It's not too exciting though. Uh, and it sort of brings us to some of the same issues as what we had with the previous one where we're finding that, well, that is going to go through the whole thing regardless, right? You're, regardless of whether or not this is going to work, you're, you're already converting it to lowercase, the whole thing, right? You're going through the whole string and making it lowercase. And then you're putting it in an array, you're reversing it, you're joining it. You're going through the whole string so many times, and then you're comparing it to this one. And... All of this could be avoided if we know that, for example, the first character is not the same as the last character. So we're gonna do it that way now. We're gonna go through one character at a time because I think that's gonna be an improvement over what we're doing. So we'll say something like four. Let i be assigned the value, actually, hold on. Before I even get into this, let's do const length is assigned the value of input string dot length. Okay, and then we'll say four, let i be assigned the value of zero, i is less than length divided by two. Yeah, divided by two, cool. i plus plus, and then we'll basically say um, if, okay, so we'll say, let's do it this way. Const left is gonna be assigned the value of input string at i dot two lowercase. Okay, and then const right is assigned the value of input string at length minus one minus i dot two lowercase. Okay, cool. We could do these in two uppercase as well. Like that would work also. It doesn't really matter. We just wanna basically get rid of the casing so that we can compare them in a case insensitive way. Okay, and then we'll just say if left is not equal to right, then return false. This is not gonna work out. Otherwise, return true. Okay, cool. So let's try running that and hey, it works. So maybe that's better in some ways. Uh, I do think it is better in fact, uh, because it'll end as soon as it finds a pair that are not equal. So yeah, that's probably better, right? But is it the best? Could we get an even better one than that? Well, I think so. We're gonna base it on this, but it's gonna be a little bit different. So check it out. Oh, I love this. This is going to be great. So we're going to revisit our ASCII table. We haven't seen this in a while. Uh, we'll take a look at it because this is what we're using uh, when we're comparing characters, right? Letters. So we could do something like this. I mean, the character code of capital A is 65. The character code of lowercase a is 97. So if we compare these... Um, what would we have to add to this one? 32, I guess? So 65 plus 32 is 97. 66 plus 32 is 98. 67 plus 32 is 99. 
there's a difference of 32 between each of the uppercase and lowercase values here. So we can take advantage of that. We can basically say uh, left now in this case, yeah, because we're, we're on to a new one here. Instead of this, we're gonna say input string dot character code at I. Ah, okay. And then over here, we're gonna say input string dot character code at length minus i minus one. Yeah, right? Yeah. And then basically the idea is we're gonna have const difference, which is gonna be the absolute value of right minus left. So what we wanna say is if difference is not equal to zero, and if that difference is not equal to 32, then I'm afraid we're gonna to have to return false. Otherwise we'll return true at the end. So let's try this. Oh, did I spell it wrong? Yeah. Imagine that. That's ironic, right? I got the casing wrong. That's funny. Anyway. Uh, great, yeah, so that works, cool. So in some ways I think that's the best way to do it just because like we're not automatically making a conversion, you know, we're not automatically saying, okay, first get the character for me and then run this function on it and then get this other character for me and then run this function on it. Instead we're saying, hey, I want the character code at this one, I want the character code at this one, I wanna know what their difference is and if it's not zero or 32, get out of here. So that's basically the idea. Okay, so that works, we'll submit it, and great, it works. Nice. So, uh, there's probably other ways we could do this one. Um, I like the idea of, of having a method that doesn't have two lowercase or two uppercase in it. I think that's probably smart. I think, well, basically the idea is it doesn't rely on like, um, I don't know, like if we were in a language that didn't have a method like this, which I guess would be kind of silly, we could still do it this way. Anyway, point is, uh, I think that's better for computation time and stuff like that, but eh, I don't know. If, if you know the details uh, in a more nuanced, better way than I do, please let me know. Anyway, I'm pretty sure we submitted this, right? So I think it's all good to go. Great. So maybe we'll pop out of this one for now. I think we did an amazing job there. Uh...